No, she's trying to get tucked in. I thought she was tucked in. <laughs> Pick it up, go pee on the rug go, or something. You know there you go. She's like. There you go. You're all set now. I need that bag. This bag? The, the, this bag? No, no, the, this the bag. plastic. This bag? Yeah, the bag of fur. Oh, this bag. This is your grandmother's coat all cut up. And, okay. Huh? This, this used to be your grandmother's oh, coat. Oh, right. You use that it's, truck? No. Yeah. It's got a lot of places that are damaged that are going to have to be removed, but it's got a lot that can still be used on it. It looks like it got stored in an attic somewhere, so it got really, really hot in the summer and right. really, really cold in the winter, and the leather got brittle and started falling apart, oh. and a lot of fur fell off. Oh, I see. It, it wasn't your main tank. <laughs> sure, I'm sure it wasn't. Want to bring that light over one here? Yeah, I was just thinking that other light, that was the reason I had that. Yeah, I need that other light. Want to bring it over? It's like uh, behind you or something? Or? Yeah, bring it like over here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll do that. It's tied <sighs> to the thing, you have to untie it. Got it. And that the thing that it's tied with, give me that as well so I can tie it over here. Definitely. That lamp likes to fall over. Sure. It's like bent slightly on the post. It's yep. not quite straight. Right. I tie it. It won't fall over. It's tied with a scarf, I think. It's bent because it's got your screws up loose on it. Yeah. I can't get up there. I swear you've got a little white fly from here. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's also attached on the bottom, so you'll have a slight bit of trouble moving it, but if you pull it up, it'll move. Where's this white thing attached to? Um, oh, I got, I got you should be able to just pull it out. It's yeah, I got it. Yeah, it's tied onto something in the... Yeah. I can tie that on here. Where's the cord go then? The cord is plugged in, but it's also attached to the floor. Just move the lamp over here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Don't put on top of stuff. 
Yeah, it's like a rocket in the hand there. That's on the rock? Yeah. That high? Yeah, right on the rock. Okay. Yeah, this thing, yeah. Yeah. There it is. You don't go away. Give me this. Give me this. Wait a minute, that's falling apart. Yeah, I, you got too much on the way. You gotta tighten it up, see? I'll turn it off while you do it because it's too bright. <laughs> turn the top light on it on. I can see with that. So leave the bottom one off. It's turning too much. Yeah, it's broken. The, 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 it's broken. I don't know. It wasn't broken when it was put together. Did you tie it up yet? Mm -hmm. Don't tie it up yet. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll get him to fix it now. Trust me. Okay. I'm upset now. <laughs> I'm upset with it. Stand the light up. Huh? Stand the light back up. I can't. I gotta fix it. It's gotta be down. Okay. Give right. me a second. I gotta do something. Right, Wendy? should look at the equipment I'm using if that's what you want. Right here. <laughs> okay, I'll be done in a second, honey. Okay.
Okay, it's coming up now. Okay. Okay, it's coming up. Okay. Straight up line, it works now. Okay? Mm-hmm. Want me to tie it still anyway? Yes. You have Rascal and you running back and forth through here. Rascal knocks everything down. You also knock everything down. This is going to stay up. No. Is it busted too? Yes. What is busted on this? I don't know. I don't know. It's been broken for several months. How did it get broken? I don't know. I, I'm not the one that uses that light. <laughs> You're the one that uses that light. <laughs> Very strange right here. Hold on a second. Very strange. Are you working on it now? Mm-hmm. Some of these, look at, look at how... Touch the back of that, right there. The, oh, yeah, it's all gone. The le yeah, the leather's just deteriorated. Yeah, I think, because this, this was made for an opera. Yeah. It wasn't made to be made for a regular wear. I think they just took like leftover scraps of fur to make it right. and they weren't properly treated but you know, 1700s they weren't treated sure. stuff yeah. properly back then anyways. So. I have to re-oil the leather before I sew it back on. I get this one off all in one piece, isn't there? Yeah. Because the threads are so badly deteriorated on this, they're actually just coming right off when I pull on them. The threads are popping right out. Really? Yeah, because they're just so old. You just lighten it. Bottom one? Yeah. Ah, uh, don't think so. The top one seems to be good enough. That shouldn't happen. Huh? 
I said that shouldn't happen. This one just split right in half. Uh oh. Yeah, see the the fur itself split in half. Uh oh, yeah. That is that is crazy. Get a, I can get a smaller, um, you don't have to get as much, how, why, wait, I, I, what are you doing? No, no, turn no, no. Turn it to the back. No, no, don't do it like that. What are you turn doing? You're so rough it, with everything. Turn it to the back. You're so rough with it. Grace, would you just rub with it? Ain't me. You could get a smaller, power, powerful light bulb. This is 100 watts. I get one that's a lot less power, and you could have it on you, and you wouldn't even, it would be a lot better. This is 100 watts. Okay. But that's why it's so that's why it's so bright. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. You all set now? Mm-hmm. Okay. When you twist it like that, it gets broken. Anyway, I'm not gonna do nothing. You know, you put this back. How things going? You okay? Uh-huh. Do I help? Did Is you? Alright. Is that better? <laughs> Does that mean no? Uh, I don't know. Right. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of them. See, look at this. Yeah, so there's a lot of inspection, right? Yes, because there's, there's a lot of damage on these. Okay. There you go, buddy. 
That's it, right there, man. Dog gets in the way. Right on. Yeah, it had a lot of damage when I first got it. And I fixed that. But it hadn't been used in years. It, it, it was never used as something that to be worn every yeah. day. It was, it was a prop for opera. So I put a lot, wearing it every day, put a lot of strain on all the... Seams. There seems to be a difference of opinion between farmed and wild caught. Yeah, where are you? Uh-huh. Coming up? Yeah, there you are. You gonna help? You blend in really well.
Fresco loves helping with fur. Okay. I think because it's warm. He likes anything that's warm and you can tuck into. Oh, sure. If you go on Etsy and look for foxtails, they sell for somewhere between thirty to seventy dollars each tail. Oh, that's a lot. Of... Yeah, but they're all people who bought them bulk somewhere and are now <laughs> reselling them. But there's very few that actually do anything with catching their own, doing their own furs. If you're if you're looking to make something that requires a lot of foxtails, you don't want to buy them that way. A lot of these are rabbits. The rabbit is the one that's fallen apart and badly damaged. You guys sit on it. <laughs> What are you looking up? Well, I have a thing called Republic. It's just news stories. They come across and just stuff around the country and around the world. I just read different stories that come up. We had one of them. I think I sent it to one. It was photos of New Newfoundland. They had a blizzard there. They had feet. They open you know, when you open a door. Sometimes you see snow. At the bottom of the door, you know, if you had a door like here, uh -huh. you had a blizzard, and you might see a foot of snow at the bottom of the door, right? Makes an imprint of the door at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You open it up. <laughs> These people open up the door. It went from the bottom all the way to the top, completely covered in snow. When you look at it, it looked like a white wall. That's how deep the snow was. They're making, they're making, they're shoveling snow. It was about uh, ten feet high on both sides, trying to have a channel to get to the house. Just, just unbelievable amount of snow they had. You know, cars completely snow, maybe twelve feet high. You try and dig out, the, you can't. The point was trying to go anywhere. You can't get. There's no street. They didn't see it on anything on the news, but apparently that was in there, pictures of it. It's not going to catch on fire that light, is it? You've got to point it toward it away because it's probably in the wrong direction. I'll, do, I'll, I'll move it later. Yeah. How, how's that going? Um, it's going. Am I interfering? No. Okay. I work better when you're here, you know that. <laughs> I just interrupted you, Wendy. Mm-hmm. Can you see you got enough light? Everything's coming apart, huh? 
Uh, yeah, no, there's, there's places where the leather is just crumbling, so I don't even need a seam ripper to take the threads out. The threads are still attached. The leather came off. So you got to cut, a, cut that away? Is that... Yeah, I have to cut all of that. All the edges that are that are ragged are all going to have to be sheared straight before I reassemble it. With what? These scissors will work. Oh, they won't, they won't work. Okay. Yeah. You don't use any bigger scissors? Don't need to. I see. Not for this. If I was dealing with something like deer hide or bear hide or, or cow hide, you'd need, you'd need, you'd need like shears that cut wire. Okay. That leather is really thick. Oh, that's right. That's, that's right. Yeah, I'm thinking about that, right? Yeah. That would hold the coat together, wouldn't it? Uh-huh. <laughs> that's, that's why a lot of leather coats are made out of cowhide, because it'll last a long time. Sure. Everything, right? Yeah. It's really uh, important. Rabbit, you don't want for something fancy. And fox, you'd, you'd, uh, rabbit, you'd only want for something fancy. Fox, you would also only use for something fancy because the, the leather is so thin on it. It's not going to... Right. Hold up good over time. Okay. It'll last a long time if you take care of it. Right. Most people don't seem to take care of stuff because stuff gets thrown out. I saw a coat on eBay. It's on eBay right now. It's entirely made out of fox tails. The whole thing's all fox tails. Really? Wow. Yep. <laughs> Guess if you, if you get enough of, of them, right? Yeah. Yeah, I noticed the 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 ones that are farms in their their disclaimer things, they make a big issue of the fact that these are not wild, they're all farmed, they're all well taken care of, they're all free range and you you, you get all this big description of stuff like that. Okay. And then the people who are completely the opposite these are all wild cat. We're we're doing pest control. They're not farmed. They're not in cages. <laughs> Do you, you see the extreme of they're they're both promoting it as better than the other. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> what is that a cause for those ones that aren't? Huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It 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 appears that most furriers have feel a need to be defensive. You you can see that. Need to be what? Defensive. Oh defensive. Oh because of the uh, the people are upset. Yeah. Nobody uses fur for anything anymore. Used to be everywhere. I wasn't that long ago. Everybody wore fur in the fifties. And a lot of people were still wearing fur in the seventies. Fur was actually making a comeback in the 70s. When you go to the 1800s, everybody wore fur. I think that's what it said. I can't remember now. I'll have to look it up. It, it's easy to look up because it it was it was Ring of Nebula. So whatever ring, whatever year Ring of Nebula came out.
Do you know Ring of Nebula? Never heard of it, Lloyd. Probably have heard it. Oh, I have? Probably, yeah, most likely. It's one of those things everybody has heard and nobody knows what it is. Right, okay. Ring of Nebula. Was it a movie? I don't know if it's ever been made into a movie. Is it a uh, somebody book or something that somebody wrote? An opera. Oh, it's opera. An opera. This is this is a costume from an opera. Oh, I'm sitting opera. here telling you the history of this coat that I am disassembling, and anybody who has anything to do with history is probably wringing their wringing their hair out now because I've disassembled something that should be in a museum. <laughs> and you wear it. You're wearing it. <laughs> Opera. Wow. If so, have you seen the opera? No. See if I can find a song from it because you've likely heard it. Sure. Well, that sounds familiar, yeah. Yeah. That. They play that a lot. Yeah. They Star said, Wars? Yes, Star Wars. No, one? Ring of Nebula. Anybody, that's what I said. Anybody who knows opera and knows what this is, I'm cutting it up. It's going to be in hysterics. Okay. This is one of the primary characters from the play. It was from the premiere. This is the snow, Wendy. I was telling you about. Look. Look, you open the door. See, Wendy? Look. Mm hmm. 74. There it is. 1874. This was made for the original premiere, which came out before he finished composing it, though, because it was stolen from him. Okay. The, there was a there was a big fight over that, so it would have been seventy two. Look, Wendy. This was made in eighteen seventy two. Look. Uh huh. Look at this one. Look, look at take take it. See how the cars are in these tunnels, like. Uh huh. That's that's you. That's enormous, isn't it? That must be 10 feet of snow, right? 8 feet of snow, huh? Uh-huh. See how the cars? I don't know how they're supposed Blizzard, to drive. Juno, 2015. Huh? You act like you've never seen snow like that. Blizzard. Oh. No. Blizzard, Juno, 2015. Okay. Juno, Alaska. It was 12 feet 5 inches. My Noto home is 12 feet 1 inches. It went over the top. Okay. <laughs> uh, April, 
Okay. <laughs> As I said, these things that the news reporters are calling blizzards. They're not blizzards because that's what a blizzard looks like. Look at that. The dog. Pat. You know what to do. This is hotter. I feel that. What? What about it? I think that's hotter. Why is hotter? I think so. Okay.
whatever my thought. It doesn't have trouble getting there. Yeah. I'll be right back. I think I'm going to shoot something at this set up. I don't know. Can we? Oh. I'll be right back. This world doesn't need a hero. It needs a professional. I could take several of these and sew them together and make a coat just from these. <sighs> Say it again, Lenny. I said could take several of these, sew them together, make a coat just from these that had tails hanging all over it. How many do you need? Five? Uh, this one covers only the shoulder. No, far more than that. For quite a few. Because <laughs> there, isn't, isn't there isn't that much here. Right. Hi, Rask. Each each one of these is smaller than Rascal. There's six of them. Mm. Rascal's bigger than a fox. They're almost exact same color as him.
Yeah, I'm going to leave this as it is. I'm not going to take this one apart. I'm taking this one apart. Took your grandmother's apart already. And then I'm going to put all three of them together to make one coat. And this is going to be the collar around the top of it. So this is going to stay as it is. Right. <sighs> you told me that, yeah. Mm -hmm. You've still got support up there, right? Yeah. How long will it take you to do it? It's all going to be hand sewn. Oh, it'll take a while. Huh? It'll take a while, yeah. But I don't have the foxtail, so. I can't do all of it yet. Right. Are you trying to tuck in inside of this? Is that what you do? <laughs> he likes this. <laughs> it's a fur coat just the right size and right color for him. <laughs> he likes that one. Yeah. He's trying to tuck in inside of it. He loves helping with anything I'm doing, no matter what I'm doing. You also you need to leave them feedback. Okay. That's like eBay, it has a feedback system just like eBay does. Sure. You can't tell where the where the front of fox heads and rascal begins. Well, that's pretty good, huh? Yeah, he blends <laughs> the exact right. same color. I'm not taking the hood apart either. The hood's going to stay the same. There's no damage on the hood. The hood's made out of... Uh, is that Cody or Wolf? It's Cody, ain't it? This is the airman, this is the airman. I'm going to try and get the airman off in one piece.
Grask, what are you doing? You just went to bathroom on the rug, didn't you? get up because I'm pretty sure that's what he just did. He just flipped the rug over and buried it all nice and carefully and then ran out in the other room. And I can't see from here. It's all the way on the other side of the room. So, I'm putting animation on again. I'll be right back. And I'm going to have to go check that. attempted to bury it. Yeah, I see. They both made a huge mess. Yeah, we're back. Kind of, sort of. I think. Yeah? Yeah? So back on. That's how we do Still had bones in it. That makes it difficult to sew. Do you see deep bone?
you okay, Ben? Bye. <laughs> Percy just came over to see where Ben went. Let's look for Ben again. He's gonna be tearing it. That's not nice. <laughs> You're trying to tell Ben to come back, right? She just came back in, she's standing there waiting.
can't be seen on the stripes here. There's a tear in the fabric. Where was it? This is part of the hood, right? Yes, this is part of the hood. I'm going to take that off. Okay. And everything is piece of metal stay stretched.
Do yeah. that? Yeah. Have as much capacity for the amount of snow I'm trying to put through it. Um, the Tribal Storm 2860 is what I call a typical residential snow thrower. Um, it's got a 243cc engine on it, uh, 28 inches. It's got a 12 inch impeller. Um, and a nice <laughs> snow and a 12 inch uh, closed so snow Okay. Um, auger system on it. So take a look and watch it to uh, see if it if snow piles up in front of the machine. That means that I'm pushing the snow pushing the snow blower harder than what the machine can push snow through it. When I'm done with that, then I'll take and put a uh, put it up against the uh, air and I've got one side of it all completely taken apart now. Huh? I've got one side of it completely taken oh, apart. Oh, really? Okay. All the fur's off, yeah. See? Wow. <laughs> I see, yep. Yeah, it ain't going to take long to take it apart. You're assembling it, so it's going to take the time. i got to take off all the pieces that where the leather is yeah. dry and brittle. And then re-piece everything back together. I'm going to need big safety pins. Safety pins? Yeah. I, I was thinking I could use my regular sew-in pins, but they're not going to, the leather's too thick. They're not going to go through that. Okay. So, so I, have to, I have to pin them all down and then sew them after they're pinned. You want the big ones? Oh yeah, I need the really big ones. The big, big, like three inch ones. Three or four inches. They're completely not paying attention. <laughs> Why are you looking up stumbling? Then again, uh, new ones sometimes. It's okay, but it's, um, it has some it has some issues. You're constantly repairing it, so there's obviously something wrong. I spoke, I broke again yesterday. Yeah, I know you're you're constantly repairing it, so obviously there's something wrong with it. <laughs> Watching somebody snow blowing? Yeah, I am. Okay. Why? <laughs> this guy's comparing two snow blowers. He's trying to trying to show one and show another one. Some seal fur here. You were talking about seal earlier. Huh? There's some seal fur here. You were talking about seal earlier. I, I can hear you. Of course you can. I can barely hear me. Boys, you I, need a hearing aid. I was talking about what? You, you need a hearing aid. You know how you got that up? <laughs> what was I talking about before? I said there's some seal skin here. You were talking about seal earlier. Oh, know seal. What, this one right here is seal. Let's see what it feels like. That seal? That comes black. That is seal. Wow, that's weird. Yeah. Okay. Kind of thin, huh? Yeah. Got my little snowboard thing in there. Okay. I like this guy. Don't they, can no they, guy they like even me. make no stuff with like seals anymore? He's no guy like me. 
Okay. <laughs> I couldn't do it anything. Marcy wants to be tucked back in. This what? one, Marcy wants to be tucked back in. This one's rabbit. Okay. Yep. so loud. It ain't that loud. You want me to try to go down? It is very loud. Okay. Seal skin was popular. Eighteen hundreds was everything. I haven't heard of it being used on anything anymore. This one's hard. Is it still too loud on it? No, it's okay now. This was just a little I think most of the rabbit skin isn't going to be salvageable. It's, it's the rabbit that's falling apart. Right, rabbit, yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all the rabbit skins. That's kind of, the leather on rabbit skin is so thin, it just, it deteriorates really fast. It's not a good thing to make a coat out of. Coats made out of rabbit skin. It's a cheap coat. Ain't gonna last long. All the 
Fox and Weasel and Martin and all those types, those are all holding up pretty well. DVDs, almost all of them.
Probably not going to need to get another seam ripper. What? Probably not going to need to get a seam ripper because I'm almost done with this. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, this this is working for it. Oh, good one. The the threads are old enough so that it do, it's not taking much pressure to, to pull them right apart. Right. Here, most of them I can just pull it and they just come right out. This one is the worst one on here. But watch it, this is links. I do paint the links on it. But it's definitely not salvageable. This is the one I put up. Thank you. 
Look how bad this little piece is here. This. Yep. The leather is just so badly deteriorated. There's, a, there's almost nothing left. Yep. Look at that. Wow, look at that. Nothing real with it. Yeah, this. Yep. It's just barely held together by fluffs of fur. You back? Yeah? You gonna help? There you go. You love Helping with furs is one of Rascal's favorite things. Probably because he feels like he, he's hunted, hunted and caught something. What's that one? I said working with furs is one of Rascal's favorite things. Yeah. But probably because he feels like he's hunted and caught something. Yeah. <laughs> Are we done?
This is what this was talking about right here. See, I'm going to attach it right at the bottom of the hood, and it's going to go all the way around. Okay. <coughs> the hood <coughs> is coyote. Okay. And the collar is fox. Oh, I see. Yeah, but see, I've got enough of the fur off so I can put right. this over it. Yeah. <coughs> Oh, yeah. It takes up a room for all the damage stuff that was on the top. It'll be sturdier, too, when I get done because it'll all be new threads. That's the reason for taking the whole thing apart. As opposed to just taking off the pieces that are broken and patching it. Because sooner or later all the rest of the threads are going to... Because it was already damaged when I got it and I already fixed it. But then it was more damaged over time. So if I completely disassemble the entire thing... Remove all the damaged stuff completely. And put it back together with new stuff in their place changed the design the way that it is on the top so it doesn't have that issue with the shoulders anymore. I'll be able to wear it and it won't, it ain't going to have the problem where it's going to fall apart again. 
because it'll all be new thread. And it'll all be carpet thread. That's another thing. I'm using carpet thread now. I've jumped put stuff. Well, when this was made, thread was thread. Right. <laughs> Just thought we got now, right? Now. Yeah, that is that is specific threads that'll hold up to a lot yeah. of carpet thread is a lot. Feel it. No, feel the individual thread. The individual thread that's there. Wow. It's got a thick, wiry. That's heavy. Yeah. That's like that's really heavy. Yeah, it's made for sewing leather. That's what this is made wow. for. Wow. Yeah, that's that's not gonna break, is it? So it'll hold up better. He's got some matting in his pants. This Scandinavian fox, this is this so, different color than the, what you normally see for fox. From Russia. Yeah. American fox usually has like more like a bright orange tint to it. This has got more like a golden yellowish tint to it. Nice one. Uh, this one, this one's Japanese fox. It's a raccoon dog. Say again. This one's a Japanese fox. It's a raccoon dog. Okay. Do you remember getting it? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, came from the surplus store. Oh, okay. Just didn't have tails on it originally. I've been slowly adding tails. When we find tails, you've been getting me tails. Oh, okay. You completely forgot. I forgot. Man. Okay. There's three tails on here now. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. There you go. Uh, well, now there'll be nine because this has six more tails. Yeah, don't worry. Yeah. I have to take... Now that I have a large amount of tails, I can take these and measure them and figure out how many tails I need to get to go all the way around the bottom. Sure you can. <laughs> you're good at that. <laughs> no, I'm not. I can tell you're all excited about this, honey. I'm not good at math. <laughs> at all. <laughs> You could be. <laughs> you could be. It's not hard for you. You're smart enough. You burn it. I've been wanting to fix this coat for years. I used to wear it all the time. It fell apart. Well, it was like three years ago that it fell apart. There I haven't been able to use yeah, it. Yeah, now, man. And I practically lived in this coat. You like it black, right? Uh-huh. So I said it was my favorite coat. That's why I was upset when it, it started falling apart and I couldn't wear oh, it anymore. Sure. But the, I didn't have the fur to fix it. I needed new fur to fix it with. There was It, it had reached a point where I couldn't just sew them together because they were falling apart. It wasn't. It was more than seams needing to be re-sewn.
it'll end up looking much better than it did originally too because it's gonna have the newer fluffier fur with it and everything that's damaged completely removed There's a fish chase happening. <laughs> Say again? Uh, the beta went down and started poking Rachel, and she chased him all over the tank and went back in the cave. He's, he's hiding. Oh, okay. Where's your car? Oh, street. Okay. Hey, my father's car coming back in.
Well, the fuel has to come out. They've had coats from China recalled several times. Really? Yeah. <coughs> Why? But, uh, they're selling them as various types of fur and then they're being tested and they're either cat or hamster. Wow. There's been some type of a spike in demand for f uh, rabbit fur. And there isn't enough to meet the demand. Oh, no, yeah, this is it. Okay. The piece that's absolutely refusing to come off here. Yeah? Where are you? Uh-huh. What are you doing? Yeah?
Yeah. Would you want some honey? Um, don't know. He just talks all the time. Boy so does? Yep. Yeah. He's, he's an extremely vocal cat. He usually wants some light, don't pay attention, right? Uh huh. He sees me doing something right now, too. He, he has to get in the middle of it. What are you doing here? What are you doing? These scissors are very sharp. Are you surprised your mother got that for you? Uh, yeah, actually I am. It's, it's not like her to spend money on something that's good quality and expensive. <laughs> not even for herself she doesn't. She... <laughs> I sew more than she does now, don't I? She doesn't she sew so hardly at all anymore. pieces are on this. Oh. See? Each one of those stripes is a single piece sewn together. Wow, that's a lot. That's mink. That's a lot of stripes, honey. Yeah. That's because minks are so tiny. They don't use the full minks to make those coats. They're only using that little stripe down the middle of their back. That's why there's so many tiny little stripes. Look at the front side of it. Doesn't look like that. That's the front of it there. Right. It's blended together, so you can't, can't tell that right there's now. so many little teeny pieces. It takes hundreds of minks to make one mink coat. That's the reason for the targeting why people don't like mink versus other types of fur. Okay. Alright. Basically you're making a coat out of mice. They're not very big. They're, but they're only a little bit bigger than the hamster. What are you doing? What are you doing? They're weasels. What are you doing? What are you doing? How are you doing? What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? What are you doing? You always hold him funny. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? I had a hamster. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> what? He's looking back at me like he wants me to rescue him. Oh. Rascal. Hey. <laughs> what are you doing?
Ой, When you when you see how close Rascal is to looking like this, you can see why they are using Cat as a substitute, though. Huh? Yeah. It, it it looks so similar to Fox. It's easy to put. Yeah. So Cat is Fox. And I've seen fur before that looked like it was cat. Oh. Army surplus there. The army barracks. Okay. They've always got they've always got a bin which's full of furs. It's all kinds of fur scraps. They they always have that. And they had some once, it looked like Ocelot. Ocelot's distinctive. There isn't anything that looks like it. They don't have any full pelts. It's just all, like, pieces and stuff. Leftovers from stuff that had been made. That's a lot of work to stick it together then? Or? Well, it's the, how you would make a coat like this. The same thing. Oh, okay. That's why they do that. A lot of people will use small scraps of fur for stuff. Patch coats like this made made out of lots of scraps of fur. That's not unusual. Mm. You you can make a very expensive looking fur coat for a tiny amount of money in comparison to a regular fur coat by getting seconds and oh, fur sure. scraps. That makes sense, huh? Yeah. That'd be nice. That'd be a nice project, though, Wendy. Uh huh. Yeah. That's why I said to, for the tails on the bottom. The the difference in quality between the the first A grade quality that they send to furriers for fancy coats, and seconds isn't that much. How about the average person isn't going to notice it. Can you get like all uh, used mink stuff on eBay? Does all, yeah, just, but if you even used, depending on the type of fur and the quality, is still going to be oh, well, expensive. Huh? Yeah. Okay. A used fur coat, if it's in good condition, is still going to be four or five hundred dollars. Okay. If you're looking at a full length coat, those are multiple thousands. Even used. Okay. But that that's what I was talking about, the fur the, the the tails. You can get seconds because when they make the fur coats, the company the companies that make the fur coats, they almost never use the tails. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. The tails are can they're considered not quality for coats. Okay. They're only using usually to strip down the middle back. They don't use things like the faces, the paws, the belly, and the tails. There's very little actually used in making a fur coat. They use a pre they use a premium part, huh? Yeah. And historically, since like around the nineteen twenties to nineteen seventies, all that rest of that was just thrown away. Oh, okay. Which is why people get upset about fur. Yeah. Older furs in the 1800s, they were caught by hunters who were feeding their family and the wife made a coat for it and everybody had coats, which is why older coats are patch coats. You get pieces of deer and pieces of beaver and pieces of whatever that they brought home to eat. Also, needles back in that time period were made out of the bones. Wow. They, they made the needles by filing them. Needles weren't metal back then. Everything. Everything was used. Nothing got wasted. Right. Which is why I prefer to look for older fur coats like this one, because this one was made in a time period when everything was used. Sure. As opposed to you get into the 1920s and onward into the, the 1970s, hmm. when furs were a really big thing, especially in the 50s, which was the peak of it. 
there was only these little strips that were used. Sometimes they're just one inch or four inches wide. Right. And the whole rest was thrown away. Okay. And you're seeing the trend today where everything's being used, which is why you're seeing tails everywhere now. You go on eBay and search for foxtails. There's thousands of them. It's because people are still making fur coats, but they're now no longer throwing the scrap out, and it's easy to find stuff. If you can look, if you search for like fox faces, you can find hundreds of them because they put them all in a scrap bin and they sell them to craft makers. And now they, they, there's people who make like like Indian headdresses and stuff, and they'll have the fox faces right. on it and things. Yeah. And so you're seeing them actually being used as opposed to being wasted. Okay. Which this, this, the guy that made this, if you look on the Etsy shop, all the byproducts that are left over from the coats they make, they sell them. Okay. They, they've got all the fox legs and fox faces and stuff there in bins for sale for people to use them. Hmm. Yeah, that was my really one. Okay. You're watching people snow blowing. <laughs> I am one. <laughs> it does seem kind of weird to me. Yes, it does seem weird to me. You are watching videos of people blowing snow. Well, he's, he talks about the snow blower, so I'm, gonna, I'm trying to remember what he's saying. Yes, after he does that for an hour. No, it's only 10 minutes. Why do you need to watch that for 10 minutes to I'm tell you? I'm not sure when he's going to talk about it. He's going to talk no, about it. No, but why Why does he have to show that for 10 minutes? That's how he is. That's how he does the channel. Okay. I've never seen this guy before. This is the first time I've seen him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you're reviewing the snowblower, okay, you review it. Well, he's doing both together. He's 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 doing it. You can see it. Then he's gonna talk about it when he's done. Okay. I guess I haven't heard him talking yet. I never heard him seen this video before.
You can watch videos of people squeezing Play-Doh. Huh? You can watch videos of people squeezing Play-Doh. That's okay. a thing. It's a trend. <laughs> yeah, well, those are dumbbells. <laughs> this is an, is an intellectual one doing this. Oh, uh, you're watching somebody blowing snow. Well, you're very critical. <laughs> no. I'm, having, I'm trying to have fun here. <laughs> and all you're doing, all you're doing is like you, cri you, criticizing me. No, not criticizing. I'm trying to figure out why I, why, why? Because when he starts talking, I have to, I have to, this is going to stop doing the snow. It's not that I'm watching him blowing snow to watch it. I'm waiting for him to, to when he finishes, to start describing his experience with the snowblower. I have to catch that beginning when he starts talking about it. I want, might miss it. And it's right, it happened right now. He just turned the snowblower off halfway through. Now he's going to talk about it. I had to go through to see when it actually is going to get the, the, the good part. I don't know where in the video he was going to start talking about the, what, he, what he, he experienced. Now he's talking. <laughs> Yeah, we doing? Yeah, come on. Yeah. Give me an extra help, little guy. The last little bit, I pushed it all the way up, and I was walking as fast as I could behind it. And if you notice, the engine just kept right with it. Notice how straight it tracks. Uh, even though it's got this nice auto turn on it, uh, it tracks down. I didn't have it locked. It just was in the regular position. Uh, it tracks down. The thing tracks really nice. I'm pretty impressed with it. How do you guys think? I forgot to say this at the 
beginning of this called Get There Now. Uh, I do that same spot every year. So there's videos out there of using a uh, Hapkarada, a Great Lady Seed, uh, of the Arctic Pro, the Red Wolf Arctic Pro, uh, Aaron's Platinum, and I think a couple others that show me clearing that same path every single year. So, Ooh, this is in the car. Sometimes not quite as much snow, but it does give you an idea of that one's what fun. these different snowballs this do one's and, different. and how they behave. So, one last thing, when you get done clearing your snow, um, on a day like today it's getting a little, uh, a little warm, so there's a lot of snow that's still inside the auger housing. I take an old uh, broom and kind of knock that out of there and then run this, run it one more time to make sure everything is clear before I put it away. If I can't do that, then I'll use an infrared heat lamp, like what the farmers use to keep the baby crates warm, to uh, melt all that snow out of that housing. That way, the next time you go use it, um, it won't be frozen up on you. And uh, it's frozen, uh, you can use it to pop, uh, pop or burn the uh, propellers up. So, just a little hint. As usual, if you got any questions, go ahead and uh, ask them in the comment section. And uh, you can read more about this at movingsnow.com. What came out that way? Okay. I learned a lot, so. What'd yep. you learn? Yep. How's that going? Um, more than half. Moving pretty good, huh? Yeah, I'm more than half done. I'm Holy cow, you're moving. Yeah. Holy cow. Once I've got all the fur off the base coat, I'm going to have to re-hem the edges. So see, it, it's got the seams are out as well. But... Then I gotta go through the fur and reattach it all. How many safety pins do you need? I don't know. I mean, a hundred or. Ideally, I would need enough to be able to pin all the fur down all at once. Big safety pins. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Mask was in his spot. Where'd my book went? This is this is why when you asked about using rabbit pelts to fix it, this this is why. Oh, that yeah. wouldn't work. Yeah, the, the rabbit the, the, the rabbit fur it's it's just falling apart. That the, won't work for me. The leather of rabbit skin is yeah. it's just it's the rabbit that's on here that is the problem. Sure. <sighs> It was now the day before the feast of Passover. Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. He had always loved those who were his own in the world, and he loved them to the very end. Jesus and his disciples were at supper. The devil had already decided that Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, would betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So Jesus rose from the table and took off his outer garment and tied a towel around his waist. Then he poured some 
water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not know what I am doing, but you will know later. Jesus declared, Peter declared, You will never at any time wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, You will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, do not wash only my feet then. Wash my hands and head too. Jesus said, Whoever has taken a bath is completely clean and does not have to wash himself except for his feet. All of you are clean, all except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, All of you except one are clean. After he washed their feet, Jesus put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand that I have just uh, what I have just done to you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so, because I am. I am your Lord and teacher, and I have just washed your feet. You then should wash each other's feet. I have set an example for you so that you will do just what I have done for you. I tell you the truth, no slave is greater than his master. No messenger is greater than the one who sent him. Now you know this truth, how happy you will be if you put it into practice. I am not talking about all of you. I know those I have chosen. But the scripture must come true that says, The man who ate my food turned against me. I tell you this now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe that I am who I am. I tell you the truth, whoever receives anyone I send receives me also. And whoever receives me receives him who sent me. After Jesus said this, he was deeply troubled and declared openly, I tell you the truth, one of you is going to betray me. The, the disciples looked at one another, completely puzzled about whom he meant. One of the disciples whom Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus. Simon Peter mentioned to him and said, Ask him who it is that he is talking about. So that disciple moved closer to Jesus' side and asked, Who is it, Lord? Jesus answered, I will dip the bread in uh, the sauce and give it to him. He is the man. So he took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan went into him. Jesus said to him, Hurry and do what you must. None of those at the table understood what Jesus said to him, since Judas was in charge of the money bag. Some of the disciples thought that Jesus had told them to go to buy what they needed for the feast, or else that he had told them to give something to the poor. Judas accepted the bread and went out at once. It was night. The New Commandment. After Judas had left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man's glory is revealed. Now God's glory is re revealed through him. And if God's glory is revealed through him, then God himself will reveal the glory of the Son of Man, and he will do so at once. My children, I shall not be with you much longer. You will look for me, but I tell you now um, what I told the Jews. You cannot go where I am going. A new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. And if you have love for one another, then all will know uh, 
that you are my disciples. Where are you going, Lord? Simon Peter asked him. You cannot follow me now where I'm going, answered Jesus, but later you will follow me. Lord, why can't I follow you now? asked Peter. I am ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Are you really ready to die for me? I tell you the truth, before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you do not know me. So tomorrow when I bring the big safety pins, right? Okay. And then uh, we have to go to the eye doctor tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Rascal needs his medicine also. Oh, that too. Right medicine, right. Right medicine, yeah. Okay. How's that going there? Uh, it's still going. It's coming off quick, huh? Mm-hmm. How much did I get to throw away? Uh, not that much, but it's <coughs> enough that there's going to be huge gaps on the coat. Okay. Yeah, so the hood is, I'm not touching the hood because there's no damage on the hood. Almost all the rest of the fur is off the coat now. So you just have to put it back on the coat, right? Yeah, I have to put it back on the coat. So the coat, so that's your, that's your uh, yeah, the template, co right? The, the coat, coat, yeah, the coat is still going to oh, be... Oh, I, I, had, I had this impression that the, the fur wasn't connected to anything. No, no, you there's just a... It, you just sewed it at the edges. No, there's a coat under oh, the fur. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm pretty stupid. I'm taking the fur off the coat. That's what I'm thinking. How are you going to put it back together? Because it's all in pieces now. How you gonna and then that now now you got that. I get it. Mm -hmm. There's two layers. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that one. Yeah, I'm just I'm taking all the fur off the coat and then. Oh. The fur has to be repaired. The damaged stuff cut off completely. And then, but there wasn't going to be enough. That's why I've got the other coat. I already took the other coat apart. Oh, I see. So they have that plus your. Uh, Thing there. Yeah, that coat, most of that coat was not repairable. That, that was really bad off, but there's enough sections of it that's usable that I can use to fill in the gaps of the stuff I'm taking off of this coat. Okay. And then this, because this is quite a lot when you look at how much it is, this is going to cover quite a lot of an area. Oh, yeah. Which a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's yeah, that's gonna cover a lot. So that so you'll have to put fur there when you have that on that. Really yeah, the, this is gonna act. This is gonna be the new collar on the coat. So that's gonna really take up a lot of, of the area. On the it's gonna coat. take yeah. The whole collar area is now gonna be this so instead of what it was fur, before. Right? And free up a lot of fur, huh, honey? Uh huh. All right then. Yeah. What time is it, honey? We have not pushed on. Um, 8.43. Yeah, let's start saying snowblowers there. Alright. Not cheap, man. Some of them are very, some of them are very expensive. This is good at first, but I'm not really sure. I guess it's capable of both work. What's the difference in the world? Yeah. Yeah.
Oh, and if I'd be heading out, I think. Okay. Doing a good job on that. Okay. You're very motivated. Yeah. Well, I would prefer to wear this coat. Well, I can see that. Yeah. You didn't believe that, so now I have that coat, too. <laughs> you like that coat? Yes, I like that coat, too. And you got two coats, right? Now I have two coats. <laughs> you prefer to wear this one, right? But I prefer to wear this one, yes. It's I like lighter. It. Yeah, that that coat is big and hit. That coat is good for heavy winter storms, but so isn't this one because fur is very warm. Sure. Well, I'm glad you got one. I'm glad that's all working out for you. Uh, now I understand how you're putting it back together. I said, well, how are you doing that? Couldn't figure out how you can put it back together. Okay. You have the lining underneath it. Mm -hmm. How's that lining? Is it holding up? Is it okay? Yeah, the, the lining material doesn't have anything wrong with it. There's a few tears around the edges near the seams, but I can just, I can see right. those. Yeah, I'm doing research. I like doing research. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking about getting the honest snow blower in the future, but I might get an air get an Arians instead. Get it? They make a ton of different snow blowers. There's so many out there now. Okay. But you have to study them quite a bit to understand what. We don't get we don't get as much snow here as some people do. I know. I know in like Buffalo, New York. They get like 100, inch, 100 inches a year. That's double what we get. Okay. We used to get a lot more snow, and every year we get less and less snow. We hardly get any snow anymore. Yeah. Ah, <sighs> yeah. It used to be a thing. Every single year, we could build snow forts. Yeah, right. No more, right? It, it's been at least 10 years since we had enough snow on the ground at once to build a snow fort. Wow. It's crazy, huh? That was actually probably quite dangerous what we were doing, wasn't it? <laughs> we caved in on you. Yeah, could have caved in. <laughs> you could be killed. That was all when all the cousins were all here. And that was... Yeah, we it can built be dangerous. massive snow for it. It can be, it can be dangerous for you. Young people don't understand what, what danger is. Yeah, when we were all like five years old, building right. gigantic snow forts. <laughs> uh, that whole area over where the motorhome used to be parked in my mother's side there, that yeah. whole that whole big thing we used to build it there every year, a big yeah. giant thing. And we we had we had rooms, bedrooms, and everything in it. Right. But we haven't, it's been years since we've had enough snow to do something like that. We haven't had a big snowstorm for a while. I've got pictures when we had to come up to the door about that much, you know. One storm, I think we got 18 inches one time. That was a big one. I had a picture of it. It's a big snow, got snowblower here and the snow's up here on the side above the snowblower. The drift. You don't know, see those too much. They have to kind of just sit and just circle around the coast, spin around, and just keep on dumping snow. That's where you get that from. Yeah. The last one just went right, kept on going. That's another thing. Storms used to stay. They'd last for hours and hours and hours. And yeah. You'd wonder how many days before the snow stopped, and now it's, you know, half hour, snow's gone. <sighs> yep. It's a weird change of weather patterns that we have. Yeah, it's the climate change. Yeah, there's a map. If you look at the uh, in the Gulf of Maine, do you know what the Gulf of Maine and this is? It really surprised me. The temperature in the Gulf of Maine is rising faster than any other place in the world. I saw that on the internet. Funny. It's only like a, a degree or so. 
over or something like that, but it's faster. And also, the, the, they have maps of what's going to happen in 50 years, how much the rising, the water, the ocean's rising now. And they show maps of the main coast where, the, where it's going to be underwater. Ocean's rising, but from the polar caps and mountain. Yeah, that's happening. So, and anyway, that's the future. Yeah, it's a big deal. Causes a fish, the uh, the water temperature change in the fish in the ocean and birds, mosquitoes, all that's being affected. By yeah, it. we got uh, things like glossy ibis, and scarborough, just flocks. What's that? A bird that's native to Egypt and shouldn't even be in the United States wow. at all. But here it is. Get my camera going. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of strange birds showing up in the Scarborough Marsh because wow. the temperature is warmer and so they're here now. Yeah. Birds that we didn't, didn't used to have just a few years ago. You see, you see them out there. There's huge flocks of them. They stand out. Is that when they have all the photo people out there? Yeah, the glossy ibis, they're, they're really distinctive looking. They don't look like something you should see here. They, they completely don't look like something you'd think of in Maine. But they're not supposed to be in Maine. Yeah, those are big. The big giant. Wow, look at that. They'll let you know the herons that used to come and take your fish. Yeah, but look at the beak on those. But things. they're exotic type. They're not the same. Look at the beak on those things, man. It's enormous. They're like stork sized birds. Wow, look at that. They stand out when you see it, and when the sun hits them, they shimmer all over the place. It's like they're made out of rhinestones. Their feathers turn all purple and green colored. If I had my expensive camera, I could take a picture of those, wouldn't I? Yeah. If I ever used it. You got Scarborough Marsh. They're all over the place out there all the time now. Wow. They just decided that was a nice what place to be. What month are they out there? I don't know. We we'll see them all the time when we go by. Wow. Is that who owns that marsh? Is that State Marsh or what? Is that uh, Rachel Carson's. Oh, so that you can walk on. It's all free, right? Yeah, it's it's uh protect. It's protected. That's what. Arrested, uh, right? What's her name? Did that? Uh, Audubon Society owns part of it. Right. Rachel Carson's owns another part of it. I can't remember. Who else owns? There's multiple people own multiple sections of it. But it's all, the whole thing's all protected. It, it's all. Sure. Uh, it's a reserve. It's, it's, it's the one, it, uh, a preserve, is that it? Right. It's the one you can't go hunting in. Oh, Because right. the, the birds are all protected and stuff. Sure. Yeah, as opposed as opposed to the ones that do let you go hunting in them. So I'll give you I'll get you put you in jail. Uh, you can go kayaking and fishing out there. They there's fly fishing and stuff. Wow. Audubon Society does does uh, bird tours out there all the time. I probably can't fly with those uh, drones. Huh? Drones are probably illegal. I don't know. They're illegal in a lot. We can't take them up to Acadia. They won't let you fly them up there. Okay. Can't, a lot of places they can't can't fly them. Everybody hates them. Everybody hates drone people. They hate them. <laughs> One guy was flying this was years ago. He was flying a drone over a beach. Over the, where this girl was, when she was uh, on a beach, sunbathing or whatever. She went back up where the drone was and and started hitting a guy, hitting him, and she got arrested. I think most girls would. <laughs> she went to jail. That's man. a peeping tom. No, it was illegal what he was doing. It wasn't illegal. He was flying over the beach. It's all public property. And he wasn't doing anything illegal. 
Peeping Tom is illegal in all 50 states. I know, but it's if you're in a public area, like a beach, it doesn't apply. Peeping Tom's have to look through your window. It, it, it's supposed to expect privacy. If you're flying a drone over a public area, it's not illegal. So, he, she got arrested for hitting him. And the same guy later, he was an engineer, same guy later, I saw a video of this one. He had a drone hovering, he put a gun on it. He'd fire the gun and drone go bink, every time I fired it, go back a little bit. Firing a gun with this drone. Remote control, pulling a pistol. It was, it was scary. He could, he could maneuver it, he could have a camera, and he could basically point it where he wanted to. No, people don't do that, but... That might Normal gotten, people don't do that, that but people like the Atwaters, they do that. Might have gotten in trouble doing that, I don't know. Oh, a lot of people get in trouble with drones. Oh, yeah. If you fly anywhere near the uh, the bush compound, they'll they'll arrest you. You fly near the you, airport. You can't even walk near the bush compound. This <laughs> well, and you fly near the airport, they arrest I, you. I think it's funny. You, you every, About every 20 feet, there's a sign. Do not pull over. No cameras allowed. Dude, stop. Keep driving. And there's signs all the way down. And there's a car parked all the way down in front of every one of them, regardless of the fact that there's signs there. Oh, I made I made a video a while back to show where where he was since he's right around the corner from us. Because there he is, President Bush. There. They're not so famous now, but I mean, yeah. famous. The, the royal family. It's the funny the, family the, the all you go by all these signs that tell you don't stop, keep driving, and put no cameras, nothing. The well, stuff isn't allowed, was, and there's there's all these cars the whole way just parked and pulled off the side of the road right in front of all these signs, but the driver telling him don't stop. When I was there one day, <laughs> when he was there, when he actually came, arrived, when he was actually at the compound, when you drove down there, which I did, <laughs> right, they'd have a police officer and they'd stop you and they'd say, just keep going, don't stop. That's what they'd tell you, like what you said. He was there one of the times we went, my mother was looking at houses that were for sale. And we, we, got, we couldn't go all the way down. They had the road barricaded off and the Secret Service all standing around. Oh, really? they, they wouldn't let anybody down there. Wow. It must have been arriving or something. Yeah. That was, that was back. I think oh, he was probably you know president that when his, that I happened. Have his, I have a... Uh, 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 um, that was way back. I have his card when he was vice president. I met him. You know that, right? Uh-huh. You, you keep I have his card there. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah, I'm quite famous now. Does it make you famous? His vice presidential seal. I gave him, had, had, I had a, um, a napkin, which you couldn't even write on a napkin anyway. You can't write on a napkin with a pen. It just doesn't work. So he took it. He didn't say a word to me. He just set it aside and he reached his wallet and he pulled out the card and he turned it over and he, and he gave it to me. <laughs> wow! That was really worth it. That's when he was vice president. So I'm quite famous money. The FBI had to do an interview with me. Not an interview, they did that. We had to give our social security numbers so they could see if we weren't going to shoot them or nothing. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't make you famous. You know a famous. Word famous I could have been, means. I could have been famous. They had a rope there. We had this rope, and I was. And famous had, means people know you. He is famous because that's why he has to have security. Right. He had the Secret Service guys there. They had the thing in the ears. They had a rope, and the and the and the photographers and all that stood behind it, but not me because I was doing the hors d'oeuvres. All right. I'm I'm walking around in the in the hot zone, right. Well, I, when I had, not, not people were taking much stuff from my plate. So I go up to the reporters, I didn't care no more. And they, oh man, they're like animals, grabbing it, eating it, like, like cats and dogs, right? I go up to the Secret Service guy, he's just staring like that. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> that happened. I wanted to, what? No, oh, thank you. I tested him. He really wanted it. I should have said, you really want this, don't you? He probably would have smiled. <laughs> he had a gun on him too, honey. He couldn't see it, it's inside his coat. Maybe a submachine gun. Those guys go through a ton of training before they get hired. Very, very selective. Of course, it's a boring job too. But I saw a video on it. They yeah, I would think being a bodyguard training. would be one of the most boring jobs. Huh? Out there. I think being a bodyguard would be oh one of the most goodness. boring jobs out there. That's why the White House fails a lot. People get through because these guys they can't they can't stay alert. It's too hard to stay alert every second. 
and then nothing ever happens. So when it does happen, they think, oh, it's just probably, oh, uh, you know, uh, accident, it's not, not real, and somebody's actually running on the lawn. Or hopped over, some guy flew a plane, helicopter in there, we had different incidents that happened. But they always seem to get through, there's always something that goes wrong. Now they had, they've actually, people got in the White House and not get caught. That's awful. That should never have happened. But they just don't, I don't know, they don't have the training. Of course, they have the White House police, and then they have Secret Service, and they have different layers of people. But it was, it's a really boring job. I could never do something like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How boring is that? Oh, my goodness. You have to rotate people. There's no way to do it right, rotate them through or something. Yep. Anyway, I shook his hand when he, he's quite tall too. He was like six foot two or something. Quite tall. Okay. George, uh, that was the senior one. Yeah. Everybody liked him in Kenny Bunk 4. Everybody thought he was very, very friendly. All the Secret Service people liked him too. They said he was very friendly to him and nice and all that. They liked to work, work with him. She used to shop at Hannaford in Saka. Really? Did you see her? We were there once, so we didn't see her. We were there once, same time she was there. They had the security guys all over the place, and then uh, I came up with the license plate on the car was, but we, we saw her car out there. And, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was because she was here doing stuff. Yeah. It was Barbara Bush and one of the nieces or something. I can't remember who was with her. Yeah, that's royalty. That's royalty. That's, that's U.S. royalty. Okay. They had some guy kayaking in the in his uh, off the ocean there, and they arrested him because he went into the zone. That was an abuse of dentist or something. Yeah. Very very strict on that stuff. All those guys when they would drive around those limos and stuff, they all carry automatic weapons, submachine guns. One, did you know that? Right. Okay. The, the, is the, the, I think it's the um, the Israeli Uzi or something like that. It's, a, it's, a sub, it's about this big, but it's some compact machine gun they carry too. And they can hide them pretty easily. Yeah, they'll take people out. I mean, they look like regular, just normal, you know, you don't feel a very normal people, but they're very well trained. Yeah. And they have the, the, the George Bush younger, the younger president, he's got secret service until he dies. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. They keep, they keep a detail until he keeps, keeps forever. Something like that. <laughs> Who's the one from uh, Plains, Georgia? He's still alive too. What was his name? Don't know. Huh? Don't know. President Carter. He does a lot of uh, uh, Habitat for Humanity. He builds houses all the time. I don't remember him. Ford's the first president I yeah. remember, ain't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that was after Nixon. I think... I, yeah, maybe uh, Carter was before him, but anyway. Um, Who's the one that was right before Reagan? I don't know. Went that Ford? Could have been. I'm not good at remembering that stuff. When you know, Nixon, yeah, Nixon and Ford, right? It was Nixon, Ford. Then it probably was um, Reagan after that. I think Ford's the first president I remember. I don't, I don't remember ones before yeah. that. I'm not old enough to remember the ones before. No. That. You keep forgetting that. <laughs> right. I remember Eisenhower. Okay. When he was vice president, president or something. I remember when the TV set was like this big, the black and white, just come out. <laughs> it just come out. I remember seeing it. I was like 10 or something, you know. And the, the picture was really snowy. You could hardly make out what it was. And I remember him talking on the thing. My dad, in fact, I remember when my dad was in Korea and he made a phone call. He never could call my mom. He was there a year and a half and he, the phone call came through. 
Yeah. They talk to us and stuff. They don't hear them. Didn't have phones or nothing. It's all that's changed, Wendy. It's all different now. Yeah. I was in. I lived in Maryland then. All right, when I'd be out there, they didn't have snow there. Yeah. Oh. Massey snoring. Yes, I'm chewing on Actually, the last piece. Almost.
and you know what I think? I, I'm gonna leave the bottom edge pieces on. That way we won't have to rehem it. Well, we're actually done disassembling now. All that's left is remaining on it is the hood now. And a couple of patches on the bottom. <laughs> the fur coat that you guys have seen me in so many videos is now in pieces. This is the new one that just came. This is the one that came from Russia. I'm using to repair that. Uh, also disassembled the mink coat. Didn't do that on stream. Taking pieces of the mink coat and the salvageable part of that punk coat, and we're gonna reassemble it. And this is going on it. Now we got more fur we gotta get because it's still not enough. Anyways, I'm going to stop this stream because that was what I was doing. I was disassembling that coat and we're done. I'm probably going to be back on in an hour or two with a regular gaming stream. But I'll be back on at some point. I don't know what time. I'm probably going to go eat first. I gotta go let Ben out. It is 9.12 p.m. Uh, yeah. Probably back on about three hours-ish, maybe. I'm not positive. I'm going to go eat. I'll be back on after that. See you guys later.